Welcome to today's lecture on cellular respiration. For today, we're going to discuss the purpose of cellular respiration. We're going to talk about where it happens, how it happens, why it happens, and the difference between aerobic and anaerobic cellular respiration. Now, one of the things that you should have already done is discussed photosynthesis. So what this is going to do is give us a little bit of information on the opposite process from photosynthesis, which is cellular respiration. The purpose of photosynthesis was to take the energy from the sun, store it in a glucose molecule so that it, the glucose molecule can then be used as food. Now, the purpose of cellular respiration is to take and break down that glucose molecule so that those energy molecules, uh, energy can then be used within the organisms. So the organisms that go through cellular respiration are everything that needs um, energy. However, we have talked about the fact that um, prokaryotes don't actually have mitochondria. So because they don't have the mitochondria, they don't go through this exact process, but they do, do go through a similar process to break down their food molecules and then take and release that energy. So they don't do it in the same exact way, but they do need to do that, uh, do this process. So, taking a look at a mitochondria, we've already talked about mitochondria, it's the organelle within a cell that's going to, it's going to have a double membrane in it. That double membrane actually acts as a way for the cell to um, increase surface area for it to be able to go through uh, some of the processes a little bit faster. Um, so it has a double membrane. The other piece down here is the equation. And you will notice that this equation is opposite from what the equation was for photosynthesis. Um, it is the glucose molecule, C6H12O6, plus 6O2 actually produces water, six water molecules, and six CO2, or six carbon dioxide molecules, plus ATP, uh, which is the energy that's released from it. So the ATP molecule is the energy that's released from the glucose molecule when it's broken down. Now, you will remember, hopefully, um, from our photosynthesis that the energy is stored in the glucose bonds. So the bonds between the atoms are where the um, energy is stored in the glucose molecule. So as we break this glucose molecule apart, that's what's going to release um, th those energy molecules, or the energy, not molecules. All right, so let's talk about ATP for a minute. We did talk about ATP a little bit when we talked about a um, nucleic acid. You will remember, nucleic acids are made up of a new, uh, nitrogenous base, a five carbon sugar, and a phosphate. Now ATP is adenosine triphosphate, meaning that it has three of those phosphate molecules. So ATP is an RNA molecule. It has three phosphate molecules um, on it. Uh, and what happens is when these phosphate pieces um, are added, that actually stores energy in those bonds. So what happens is we create an ATP molecule when we break apart our glucose molecule. Um, we create an ATP molecule. That energy in those bonds is something that we can use. It's kind of like a full battery. Okay? We can actually use this ATP as a full battery for our body to actually have the energy. Now for us to use that, what has to happen is it has to break one of those bonds between the phosphates. So it takes, breaks the bond between the phosphate, releases the energy, our body actually uses this energy, and when it uses this energy, our battery ends up going down to half full. Now, when we release that, we're not a triphosphate anymore. We only have two phosphate molecules left, so we now have an ADP molecule, or an adenosine diphosphate. So, ATP is where we get our energy. It's like a full battery. We then take and break away a phosphate. When we do that, it releases the energy for us to have. We're left with an ADP molecule, or adenosine diphosphate, and only a half full battery. So ATP molecules are the energy that our body actually uses. We break apart the glucose, the energy gets put into the ATP, and then our body can actually release that energy and use it um, as, a, as it would a battery. So let's talk about two forms of cellular respiration. Two forms of cellular respiration are what's called aerobic 
and anaerobic. Now, the prefix an, we've talked about this before, but it means not or without. The um, term aerobic is dealing with oxygen. So aerobic would be oxygen or using oxygen, and anaerobic would be without oxygen. So when we go through cell cellular respiration with oxygen, it's called aerobic respiration. And when we go through oxygen with, um, when we go through cellular respiration without oxygen, it's called anaerobic respiration. And we're going to break the two of those down in just a minute. So, as we take and break this down, this is actually aerobic respiration. This is going to produce for us a lot of energy. Okay, aerobic respiration. The first part of it. Um, which is actually considered an anaerobic process because we don't use energy yet, uh, oxygen yet, is called glycolysis. Glyco, meaning oxygen, uh, meaning glucose, okay? And then lysis, we've already talked about this when we talked about hydrolysis, okay? A hy the process of hydrolysis is breaking down the polymers into monomers and releasing, um, uh, using water. So it's absorbing water and breaking apart those molecules. So we're breaking apart. The term lysis means to break apart. Glyco, dealing with glucose. So we're breaking apart glucose molecules. We're taking our six carbon sugar and we're breaking it down into two three carbon sugars. Those three carbon sugars, as we break them apart, actually release two ATP molecules. So we produce two ATP molecules in that um, process, which is pretty good, we're good, we're getting some energy here in this anaerobic pro process. The next piece is what's called the Krebs cycle. Now glycolysis actually happens within the cytoplasm. Then those three carbon sugars go into the mitochondria, get sent into the mitochondria, and the Krebs cycle is this cycle here that takes this three carbon sugar and it takes it around in the cycle and as it does that it starts breaking it apart. As it starts breaking it apart, it takes and releases two ATP molecules. So we have two ATP molecules in glycolysis. We then have two ATP molecules produced in the Krebs cycle. Okay, but we haven't added any oxygen yet. And the final part of um, aerobic respiration and inside the mitochondria is what's called the electron transport chain. And the electron transport chain actually takes in the oxygen. So the oxygen comes in. It releases water as waste, so this is where the water gets released at. <coughs> but the big key point on the electron transport chain is the fact that it produces 32 ATP molecules. So through the entire process of aerobic respiration, and I know we said that glycolysis is considered anaerobic, okay? It's considered an anaerobic part of aerobic respiration. Um, so the, through the entire piece, we're actually producing 36 ATP molecules. This is important because when we get to anaerobic respiration, you're going to notice that, that number is extremely, this number right here, 36, is much larger than what you're going to produce in anaerobic. So aerobic respiration consists of glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. Glycolysis produces two ATP. The Krebs cycle produces two ATP. The electron transport chain produces uh, 32 ATP for a total of 36 ATP molecules. Now let's take a look at anaerobic respiration. So anaerobic respiration is going to start just the same way. We're going to have glycolysis. We're going to break down our six carbon sugar. We're going to break it into two three carbon sugars. And we're going to release two ATP molecules. That's great except for the fact that we don't have any oxygen available. This happens in two different ways. First of all, it can happen in fruits and vegetables. When it happens in fruits and vegetables, it's called um, alcoholic fermentation, and you'll see that over here. This is exactly the way that alcohol is formed. We take those three carbon sugars that were broken apart, and they come down through a process, and through that process, they produce what's called ethyl alcohol, and then they also produce carbon dioxide. Now the carbon dioxide that's produced are the bubbles that are produced in the alcohol. So we have ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide produced, and this is called alcoholic fermentation. You will notice that I don't have any ATP molecules over here. And that's because 
This process does not produce any ATP molecules for our body to actually get the energy. Or for, I should say, for those animals and plant, uh, for those plants and fruits uh, to actually get the energy. So this happens in fruits, vegetables, and other plants. Now, in animals, we have what's called lactic acid fermentation that happens. And this is a buildup of lactic acid in our muscles. So when we don't have enough oxygen in our body and we're working out excessively, what happens is you get that burning feeling in your muscles. That burning feeling is lactic acid buildup. And the lactic acid is actually not all that great for your muscles um, if it builds up too much. And what happens is, it, is it's produced because you don't have enough oxygen getting to your muscles okay, as you're working out. You don't have enough oxygen getting there, so your body is still trying to use that energy that you have, but it's not actually giving you anything. Okay, It's not giving you anything in return. So for lactic acid fermentation, we break down the glucose, again, go through glycolysis, break it down. We produce two ATP molecules, come down this way. We produce that lactic acid buildup, but we produce no ATP down here. So through anaerobic respiration, whether it's in plants or in animals, the only thing we produce is the two ATP molecules that are produced in glycolysis. Everything else is not ATP that's produced. So, to refresh, cellular respiration happens in pretty much every single organism. It happens in the mitochondria of eukaryotes. It's to take and release the energy from um, food molecules so that we can have that energy and use it. The usable energy in our body is then produced through ATP molecules. The ATP molecules release that energy when it goes to ADP. Then we have aerobic respiration which happens with oxygen and produces a total of 36 ATP. And we have anaerobic respiration which happens without oxygen and only produces two ATP molecules for the, um, for the organism.